Did you know that syphilis can actually affect the brain and the spinal cord? Yes, it does. And when it does, it is a life-threatening condition. Uh, syphilis is an STI. It is a sexually transmitted infection uh, that spreads through direct contact with syphilis sores. Um, it is uh, treatable and relatively simple to prevent. Uh, but once it goes untreated, then the affected person is at risk of developing neurosyphilis. Uh, neurosyphilis is a syphilitic infection of the nervous system. The nervous system includes the brain and the spinal cord. And like I said, when it happens, it is a life-threatening condition. Uh, what causes syphilis? Uh, Triponema pallidum is the bacterium that causes syphilis and subsequently neurosyphilis. Uh, neurosyphilis tends to develop at um, 10 to 20 years after the initial infection with the bacterium. And having HIV and untreated syphilis are the major risk factors for neurosyphilis. So you always have to get a um, regular medical checkup in order to diagnose whether you have syphilis or not. Because you can actually have it, but when it is asymptomatic, meaning it won't show signs and symptoms. And once it is not treated, then you are at risk of developing neurosyphilis. So today I'm talking about the signs and symptoms of neurosyphilis. By the way, having uh, these signs and symptoms may not necessarily mean that you have um, neurosyphilis. You may actually be suffering from any other form of neurologic disease, but it may hint that you have neurosyphilis. Uh, there are actually five different forms of neurosyphilis and each may present differently. So I'm, so I'm going to talk about each form of neurosyphilis and its signs and symptoms. One is asymptomatic neurosyphilis. This is the most common uh, form of neurosyphilis. And it occurs, it usually occurs before the signs uh, and symptoms of syphilis become visible. So in this form, you won't feel sick or experience any signs of neurologic disease, but you actually have the disease. And that is why it is very important to usually have regular medical checkups because with these checkups, that's how the doctor will get to know that you have um, neurosyphilis even when you don't show any signs and symptoms. Then two is meningeal neurosyphilis. Um, this form uh, usually shows up anywhere from a few weeks uh, to a few years after someone contracts the infection. And the signs and symptoms include nausea, that is a feeling of vomiting, and then vomiting itself, uh, a stiff neck, a, a headache, and then you may also uh, get um, loss of vision or hearing. Then three is meningovascular neurosyphilis. Uh, this is a most serious form of meningeal syphilis, but in this form, you will have had at least one stroke. Yeah, uh, up, uh, around 10 to 12 percent uh, of people with neurosyphilis develop this form, and the stroke may, may occur a few months after you've contracted the disease, or it may uh, occur a few years after you've contracted the disease. So, meningovascular neurosyphilis is a more complicated form of. Um, uh, meningeal syphilis. So you will have the signs and symptoms of meningeal syphilis, but in addition, you will also have had a stroke. And then the fourth form of neurosyphilis is genoparesis. And uh, this form can um, and appear decades after you're infected with syphilis, and it can cause lasting issues. Uh, however, it's fairly rare today because of the advances uh, in the screening, treatment, and prevention of STIs. But if it develops, uh, genoparesis can cause several uh, health problems. Uh, the signs and symptoms include paronia. Uh, paronia is a feeling of being threatened, like you think someone is there watching you and they want to do something against you, which is actually not true. Um, then mood swings. Uh, emotional troubles, personality changes, uh, weakened muscles, uh, the loss of ability to use language, and it can also progress to dementia. Then the last form, uh, which is the fifth form, is tebis dorsalis. 
This is also a com uh, rather a rare form of neurosyphilis and it can start to affect the spinal cord 20 or more years af after the initial infection. The signs and symptoms include trouble balancing, uh, loss of coordination, incontinence, this can be urine incontinence or fecal incontinence or both. Then an altered walk, uh, you may have vision problems and then uh, pain in the abdomen, arms and legs. So basically those are the signs and symptoms of neurosyphilis. And why did I want to bring up this um, video? Uh, the major reason uh, I just wanted to emphasize the, um, the importance of having regular medical checkups because this is the only way you can uh the doctor can uh find out any health issues any infection any diseases that may be in your body even without your knowledge or even without you having the signs uh, for that the disease because uh, some diseases are actually easy to treat in the early stages of diagnosis than in the later stages Actually, some diseases become untreatable when they are diagnosed late, later in the in their in their, in their stages. So, always have a regular medical checkup. This is how you can be able to identify any health issues, uh, even when you don't know or even when you don't have any signs and symptoms of the disease. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. I hope you gained some knowledge uh, about uh, syphilis that you didn't know. See you in my next video. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to like. Don't forget to share. If you have any question, leave it in the comment section. Thank you for watching. See you in my next video. Bye-bye.